Hi, today I'm going to show you what I'm doing on an everyday basis to modulate the code progressions. You know, code progression is very important. It's a skeleton and the muscles on the, on the storytelling of the songs. This might sound like uh, tutorials to be an arranger you could find in, in uh, YouTube or elsewhere, <laughs> but this is definitely not. My intention is not showing off my techniques, but to delve deeper on the philosophical aspect of uh, code progressions and explaining how, how the, why it is necessary to think twice on the code progressions in order to achieve exact color, the exact taste, or even exact smell you want to make when composing or arranging songs. This is deeply related to my synesthesia kind of feelings. Sense of taste, sense of smell I have on the perception of harmonized notes in motion, which everybody like you could feel likewise, I hope. Okay, so uh, let's move on. Suppose you have composed the motif like this. I repeat. <laughs> this is slightly delicate. <laughs> and elfing phrases. This is a monophonic melody, but you have to put first the main skeleton, the oh, bony, you know, skeleton, bony framework on it to convince this melody. This is like this. Yes, this is famous 2-5 motion. 2-5 motion is very e very easy and handy tool to convince the context of the phrases. Okay, and uh, let's move on to the putting a muscle and the blood. <laughs> this is um, called upper structure triad. This is more pre precisely defining the context of the melody. So. Most of you would think this is going to be the first choice. I repeat. Okay, this is a correct answer. It's too correct. It's something like a political correct <laughs> on arrangement. But at the same time, there is nothing interesting inside this, this idea. <laughs> because maybe you can't stand out from the flock if, if this is only choice in your mind. So let's be creative. So I would do the, the different way. This is going to be version 2. I repeat. What do you feel? <laughs> so, how did you find the difference between version 1 and 2? Okay, for keywords for version 1 is lyrical, romantic, elfin, and uh, somewhat insecure 
and um, but slightly spontaneous. And uh, when it comes to the the color, it's like a pink or some pastel color, like a, like a sky blue or a light green. And then for taste, it's definitely like something like sweet. Yeah. <laughs> and version two is more epic, convinced, uh, authentic, and uh, based on history. Yeah, it's, it's definitely more convincing than version one. And for for color, it's like a deep burgundy or deep blue or something something very deep. And for tastes, okay, we find it as this is like a main dish, maybe a main dish I I took hours to cook. In version one, the upper structure triad are based on the minor third called the minor third harmonization. So that should put a uh, strength player in slightly difficult situations because in the orchestra, everybody is listening to the neighbors. So, um, for example, one, one violin player are listening to a uh, player sitting next. If if the player sitting next is playing the th minor third higher pitch than you play, oh, it's it's slightly difficult to detect the pitch because the harmony harmonics alignment in the th minor third minor third harmonization is not not well aligned compared to a uh, major third. The major third is much more easy to percept. So uh, it, my motivation for version two is completely deriving from this this kind of thinking, keeping the upper structure harmonics genuine in genuine major chords, like I play. If I don't play uh, left hand bass notes, it's harmonics comprises of just uh, just a major harmonics. It's very easy for orchestra play orchestra players to play. Even uh, bass line collides with uh, with these harmonics. The main reason that you might feel this is more this version two is more epic. This is found in the Prokofiev style. Prokofiev, he's very clever in 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 in, in building up the upper structure triad only with major chord, but. Uh, but the uh, bass notes that collide with them, and the, the, the total perception is uh, like a minor cause. It's very interesting. This process, uh, I, I explained this time, is I'm doing it every time after, after I compose something. I, I'm thinking several choices of uh, chord progression modulations, then uh, finding which is the best which is closer, which is, is closest to uh, my initial whole picture I had in the very initial image of uh, composing songs. So, uh, yeah, this is my workflow. With the orchestral sounds, it's gonna be like this. I'm all grown up now. <laughs> <laughs>